Hello, everybody. How you doing tonight? Not sure who's I. Sorry for getting late. Um, let me see. Okay, comments are on, so I can see that. Um, I do apologize for a few minutes being late. Uh, computer issues, but we're back up and running. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's here or not. And we'll give it a few minutes here before we get going. If not, we'll just go ahead and go, and then it'll be recorded, and it'll always be here. So. Okay. I just lost my bob in there for a minute. All right. So, I don't know. Just checking some stuff on the computer here. Make sure we're up and we're live streaming. We are going. Okay, no viewers in yet. So, all right. So, oh, we got one viewer now. So, all right. We even do this for one viewer. We don't care. It'll be recorded and it'll be here on my channel. And we're trying to grow my channel to so get it more out there. But um, for tonight, as you heard in the background, that's my assistant, Buddy the Wonder Dog. <laughs> So anyways, tonight we're going to go through a trilogy of my trout flies, three of them. I'm known for a lot of my bass flies and that. And tonight we are actually going to, um, sorry, I had to move my material. He's over here taking, trying to get off my, taking off the table here. So anyways, um, it's a trilogy of flies. Um, they're called my E-Train Emergers. The first one we designed, the first one we're going to tie is my handy version. Um, we created that, or I did about three years ago, uh, maybe four years ago. And it works great. It's a great soft tackle. And then when the fish start rising, we found out you put dry fly floating on it, and it floats like a cork. So we really like using this quite a bit. It's caught a lot of fish. Then I decided to come up with a BWO, a little smaller version. Works just as good. And then um, I'm just trying to see what that. All right. Okay, just had a message here <laughs> pop up on my, I'm new to this um, YouTube live, but um, so then we created BWO, as I started saying, and then the last couple years or a year, I've been working on this little black stony, I call it, there's a lot of black stone flies, early season trout, and it works great for that too. So um, these all work great as mergers, a little dry fly floating on it, it works great as dry flies, and there's going to be one more addition to this family. Um, not going to tell anybody. It's going to be a top secret for a little bit, so we're going to test it again this year and see if it works any better. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to zoom in and apply. If anybody has any questions, I do have the comment section up, so hopefully I'll be able to see it. And here we go. We're going to zoom down to the fly here. And well, let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, all right, try it again here. All right, I think that's biggest I can bring it in, but we can fix it by bringing the camera in a little bit and get this focused. All the fun. Trying to get it focused there. All right, well, it looks like the best is gonna actually come in for some reason, I'm not exactly sure. But, all right, could be the shirt messing with it right now. All right, so I'm going to get this out of the vise, loosen this up a little bit. The hook I'm using um, is a Nymph hook, and it's from Firehole Outdoors. Um, it is the 633. Um, this is size 12. I tie the hennies in 12 and 10s and 12s. Um, Sometimes a 14. The one you've seen in the vise was a 14. So um, I'm going to get the thread started here. Run it to the back. I'm using, this is just regular black thread. You can use that for this one. It doesn't bother it. And all right. I'm just having a hard time seeing here right now. So bear with me. <laughs> all right. For the tail feather on here, I'm going to use wood duck. And get a section of it here. All 
go ahead and put that on here. And go ahead and tie it in. A friend of mine has a really cool fly. Um, I got the thread stuck right from him. Unwrap it here. There we go. You got to watch out for um, the hook point on the uh, these fire hooks. They're very sharp. All right. So a friend of mine has this amazing opening day special fly. And he always ties it with wood duck on the tail. Which really works out great because it's got, if you ever tie with wood duck, it's actually really, really beautiful fibers in the water and stuff. Alright, so you're going to run that back. I always run the thread underneath the tail as I showed, did a few minutes ago, just like that. And come up and around. Let's see if I can get this focused in just a little bit more. Right. For some reason, tonight it doesn't want to focus that well. Alright, so that's going to be probably the best I can get there. Um, so then for the body, we're going to put a rib on here. Um, this is small, um, red wire. Let's see if I find the end of it here. Either small or BR works great. Um, red on this fly is very essential. It gives it just a little bit of a contrast when you wrap this on there. And go ahead and tie this on. And bring it to the back. And make sure it's secured. Watch out for the hook point because I just poked it really good. All right. So for the dubbing on this, on the body, we are using my favorite spiky squirrel. And this is uh, Rusty Brown. If anybody's ever used this in, and you see my seminars, I love this stuff. It's great. So remember when you dub, you pinch, twist one way. If you're new to this, pinch twist one way don't go back and forth on there don't put too much on you can always add more in a little bit so what we're going to do is wrap this really tight and i got to restretch it because i just hit the hook point here you hit the hook point you're rubbing doing dubbing that's what happens it just breaks it off free and you could be possibly breaking your thread so i'm going to be pulling really tight on this if you can see the guard hair is on here not really well, that great but you bring it up to about right there and let it set. The guard hairs have popped on this thing, and you can see them. They're all standing out. Uh, rotate the vise there a little bit. All right. So now what we're going to do is counter wrap the wire and bring it back. Palmer going up. I don't need all this wire, so I'm going to turn most of this off. Bring this up. And a lot of people that purchased fly have said that saved the day. It's a lifesaver. Um, this fly is just, it's tremendous. The coloring is really great. Yes, there's some synthetic materials in there, but it does work good. And just let you know, I'm used for tools today. I have the Norvice Mechanical Bobbins. Uh, this one's the green one, if you can see that. So... Um, and anadrama scissors, the new razor scissors, by the way, if you purple too. So if you did use these, just letting you know, they are very, 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 um, sharp and you better be ready to cut. So whatever you're doing. All right. So here we go. We're going to put some, this is golden olive again, spiky squirrel dubbing. Now this time we were just doing a collar, so you don't need as much. So I just get a wisp like that there, and it's basically all I put on there. I'm going to just do a little noodle of dubbing, and just wrap in one spot. So it's just like that. All right. So basically, um, you just do a collar like that. All right. Now, just looking for stuff here for a second. So now... I am putting, um, this is poly yarn floating, um, the underwing on this. And when you get this off a card, okay, you're going to have all these kinks and everything else. So it's going to look like, probably like that when you get it off the card. As you can see, it's got little nasty bends and stuff. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is trim some off. And once I trim off all the bendy parts on here, because we don't really need that stuff. 
All right, so we're going to do an underwing. So basically, this is going to be a whole strand for the size uh, 12 and 14 or 10 if you do a Henny and 10. Um, and trim it off. I really want to just come back to the base of the bend of the hook, just like right there. And I'm going to trim a little bit more off. The way I do that is just take my, you know, just keep measuring it and get where I want. Do a pinch loop with my fingers and secure that in. All right, we're almost done there with this one. So basically, I smush that around so it looks sort of like that on the underwing. And then we're going to use, this is whiting um, hackle. And this is, uh, you can see that it's backwards, but it's Brahma hen um, model gray. This is a, if you can get the Brahma hens, this has got really some nice fibers on it. I highly recommend it for the soft, I love them for soft tackles. And so we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and peel off some of that fuzz stuff. Hold the stem in your hand and pull off one side of the feathers. So basically, you're going to have, I'm going to get a little more off up here. Okay. Actually, Tim Camisa showed this trick to me. So you don't want a lot of fibers on your up front on your mayfly. So basically, that's the way your feather is going to look like. It's all bare on one side with a little tip on the front. And you want it so when you wrap it, the um, face of the feather is facing forward. Now I'm going to do is pick up the tip I put in there, tie it down, and then I'm going to come behind it and see if I can get that secured a little bit more in there. I trim it off. All right. We don't need this tip in here, so I'm going to go ahead and trim it so it's off there. Now I'm going to do is take the hackle. Now I don't wrap the soft hackle like normal everybody else does, so I'm going to show you how I normally do it. And I just wrap it around. So about right there. I don't want to get too many feathers in the front of this. I want it to look somewhat natural when it's in the water and not whole bunch of hack, uh, hackle or somewhat legs on there. So secure that in. Trim that off. Go ahead and comb your feathers back. And secure them in. And do a make a head on there. Spin your hackle around on there. So it's all spun around. Make sure it's popping out. And just form a head and do a whip finish. Now, I don't really put glue on any of these flies in the front. Um, if you wanted to, you're more than welcome to. And go ahead and do a half hitch. Come in, trim it off. Could have used the bottom of my half hitch too if it does have a um, cutter on there. Works really good. And so you just, that is the Henny version of the train merger. It looks really good when it gets buggy in the water, and it's a really good fly. All right, so the next fly we're going to go to is going to be a little smaller. This is a BWO version. I don't, I thought I had some made up when I sat down. I've been outside doing stuff and that, and didn't realize I didn't have any, but that's okay. We can hurry up and tie one up. So, all right, so we're using a size, this is 16, so you want to tie these in 16 or 18. This is the same nymph hook as what we used before, 633 from Firehall. Um, I'll show you there. Yeah, I really like their hooks, and now it's a little challenging getting them, because now i got to order them instead of right from them, from the store. So, all right, so what we're going to do here is take our thread. We're using, you can use black, or if you want to switch over to olive, you're more than welcome to. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get our knot put in, take our scissors, put them back in my hand again. Go ahead and trim that off. Now on this one, grab the, just grab me some feathers here. This is also whiting feathers, and it is, this is model gray um, olive. So... Now we're going to want to, and if you ever notice when you do your feathers, you're going to start noticing right in here, you know, that's mainly where I use. You can see it's a little, 
missing some feathers in there, but that's okay. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to get a big one first from the back. That's why I originally started over here for. I'm just showing you where we're going to get the other fibers from. All right, so we're going to pull some fibers off the side of this, just like that. Just pull them off. And about hook length come out of the back. And go ahead and secure them in. Just like that. All right. And I got to adjust the hook in here because it's moving. And then tighten it in. Okay. And the vise I'm using is the Norvice Legacy um, vise. And like I said, mechanical bobbins and all that good stuff. All right. So we got that started. So now on this one, we're going to do um, owl, which I don't think that piece is long enough. Yeah, it might work. All right, so we're going to do, this is copper, um, small. Uh, you could go extra small in here if you wanted to. Usually when you do anything over size 16, you don't really want to put dubbing on the hook and everything. You usually just use your thread. But... I decided to take it to another notch and I created my own dubbing. It's got uh, ice dub, trilobal dubbing, um, which is a form of an antron, and I think some rabbit in there too, if I'm not mistaken. And the recipe written down. Um, but I do about, you know, split it up between thirds in each one of those. And the same thing. Because I didn't really like the olive that I seen it's the spiky squirrel, and I wanted something just a little different. Um, I did put a little bit of squirrel hair in here too, or hair's ear it was. And that way, because hair's ear does the same thing like the spiky dub, the guard hairs will pop on you. Which really, to me, that makes a really nice buggy appearance in the water for the fish. All right, so now we're done with this one. Put that on there so in case Buddy comes back down and visits again. All right, and he just heard his name, so he's probably going to be back down here. All right, we're using gray this time for the collar. Once we get going here, I'm going to go ahead and, well, before I put that on there, we're going to go ahead and wrap our wire up. Same thing, we're going to counter wrap the wire. And just bring it up. Again, you know, when, now one trick I didn't show you, you want to wrap around at least once. Hold it up. Now hold it really tight. So when you take your thread and you wrap around something you counter wrap the other way, you have a possibility of undoing what you just did because you're pulling against it and everything. So it's secured in. So you can either helicopter it off, which is really good, or just use the very back part of your scissors back in here, and it'll be fine. Now we're going to go ahead and put some... Hi, buddy. Buddy's back. He's supervising down here. So, all right. So, I'm going to go ahead and do a collar here. I think he actually wants to be on camera. All right. So, I'll show you who Buddy is. Buddy, come here. See, there's Buddy. Yep, Buddy the Wonder Dog. <laughs> all right. Back to fly tying. <laughs> all right. So, now for the underwing on here, we're doing a gray. And. We're going to go ahead and trim it off. And now we're going to take and use half of it because it's using a smaller body on here. You don't need as much underwing on here. So this is gray polypro floating yarn. Trim it off on the butts. Go ahead and lay it down right on top. You want the same position back at the bend. Go ahead and trim it off. And go ahead and just rub it around. It's a little longer. That's fine. It's not going to hurt it. All right. Go ahead and comb those back as best you can. All right. Just like that. So I got one loose fiber here. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and grab the olive once more. Now we're going to look for a small feather in the front. See if I got one left on here. I'm getting very scarce and I'm gonna have to order another cape. 
But this fly, these work, these, this series of flat trout flies I've done, they actually work really, really great. Um, caught a lot of fish with them. And where we fish on opening day, we do have, it's really known where we fish at for trout opener actually does have um, some nice trout or BWO action up there sometimes. And so it's always nice to be having those in your box, but we always have a lot of tiny black stone flies. We have a lot of hennies coming off. So basically your feather is going to look the same way as it did before. So we're going to go ahead and put this in here. All right, secure that in. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and wrap. I'm going to have to yep, keep it so the front stays toward the front. Oh, got to twist it back around. It twisted on me. All right. And sometimes this Brahma can be very, very hard to take care and move around and stuff. And sometimes it works even just, you know, as smooth as the last one did. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and comb everything back to the back. And once I get secured so it doesn't come undone, I'm going to take these fibers here that decided want to be rebels, and we're going to fix them. Take those right off. All right. So we're going to come up and go ahead and trim that off. If, like I said, if you're using these um, razor scissors, be prepared because they are very, very sharp. And they do cut instantly once you get down there. So basically... Uh, where's my half inch tool? So the funny thing is, if I'm doing regular trout fishing and not Euro on opening weekend, this, whoop, all right, there we go. This is the flies that I will be most likely having in my box and using pretty much most of the day. All right, we got some thread we got trim up. Because, again, I just tapped it with the scissors and it came uncut. All right. Great scissors, by the way. I used my other ones that I've had for a couple of years. I have, they told me to beat the crap out of them and add dramas. I did, and they're still cutting. So, still work great. All right. So, that's the BWO. That's a size 16. I'll go down to size 18 on that. Um, and if you feel froggy enough, maybe you could do it at size 20. All right. So, we got that one done. One last one to the trilogy right now. Like I said, the family's going to grow. We have one more in process. Um, not really going to say what's going to be, but something like the name of White Glove Howdy. Hmm. Let's ponder that one. All right. So Stonefly is a little different fly. So instead of using the same nymph hook, I am going ahead and using a curved hook from... Uh, fire hole outdoors. You can use um, the 3X, was it 200 hours work great? Right? This is a size 16, again from fire hole. Um, the number is 718. So if you're looking for that. All right, so basically, I had to put some white down back behind here. And I did spool up my other backup bobbin is purple, by the way, in case Britt's watching. Ha <laughs> ha, got the purple one. I got actually two purple ones now, Britt. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take the black thread. And as you can hear Buddy, he's our guard dog here. He loves barking at anybody who walks by the house. So <laughs> sorry about that if you can hear him in the background. All right. So stoneflies have these tiny little legs. So we're using this flex wrap stuff I use. I used it on the easy nymph that um, I tie too. So stuff goes everywhere. It's unforgiving. So... What I mean by that, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a ball back here, a thread. I like to splay them out just a little bit. You can put a little bit of dubbing there if you wanted to, to do that. But a little bit of thread works great. Put it on one side of the hook. Hold it down. Tie it in. Come back on this side and tie it in that way. All right. Now, as I said... You know, they're both tied in the same spot, but they both went a little separate direction. But that is fine. It's buggy. It works great. And fish don't care. Appearance-wise, you can sit there and mess around with it if you want. But we ain't going to worry about that. So, 
Um, thought this was already out. There we go. All right, so what we're using on this is just basically um, black UTC extra small, or small, I should say, on here. This is for the ribbing on there. Now, a lot of people say when they count stone flies and you tie them, it's got to be 10 segments in the back, you know, for the halves. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, you want to change it up just a little bit. I want to just do more of a silhouette type fly that when you look up at it, it's basically when the fish look at it upwards, it's going to look just like a bug and it's not going to worry about it. So, all right. And a friend of mine taught me that trick. If you want to know what the fish is looking like at the fly, turn the fly over, look at it like it's fish's point of view. Does it resemble something in nature that's actually in the water or doesn't it? So easy way to do that. And if it does resemble it somewhat, then you got, you're on the way to a successful tie there. All right. This is a black spiky squirrel, naturally. Um, no, I'm not endorsed by them, even though I love their material. Now, if you do look for the material online, sometimes it just says squirrel dubbing, and sometimes it'll say spiky squirrel dubbing, but it's from SLF. So that's um, from that company there. I just dropped something on the floor. I don't know what it was. Hopefully it's nothing I don't need. Right offhand it is. But that's all right. We'll get it here in a second. I'm going to put just a little bit more dubbing on. I want to just come not be back so far. All right. So then we're going to do is we're going to come around, counter wrap the black on there. And basically we're just doing the segments. Plus it reinforces the body by counter wrapping like that. And it gives it somewhat of a buggy appearance to it. Go ahead and secure this in. Go ahead and remember I held that tight because you're counter wrapping. So anytime you do that, Another thing too, the wire doesn't fall in the, um, down in the wraps of the um, body on that either. Whereas if you wrap with the wraps of the dubbing, your wire could fall down in between there and you'll never see it. So I try not to uh, have that happen. So we're going to use black polypro for the underwing. Same thing. We're going to go ahead and this one does not want to come apart. So we're going to split that in half also just because... We don't need the whole strand on there. A little bit more off. There you go. I'm going to lay it down right at the back. Now, if you want to put a dark or a brown polypro on here, you're more than welcome to. Because if you ever look at a stonefly when they're out, they do, they're not solid all black. They have a little bit of brown tint to them. So we're going to fix that here in a minute. All right. So for the... But for the feather on here, this is also Brahma. This is a, I want to say chocolate. I'm not quite sure. Um, I think that's what it is. So we're going to go ahead and get a feather off here. I'm a little smaller than that. And a little bigger than that one. <laughs> one thing if I'm tying a whole bunch is I'll go out and go ahead and pull a bunch of the feathers out. So I don't have to worry about it. And the same effect as I did on the last two versions. We're going to go ahead and pull, make a diamond effect. And go ahead and I'm going to tie this on. Okay, go ahead and tie that in. And then just come back over. And what that does is just make sure you lock your feather in so when you go to wrap it, it doesn't come undone. Good trick, especially if you tie quite a few for a long night tying. It does happen. You pull the feather out. At least it's up to the front and it's almost done. So you don't try about it. Wrap around a few more times like that. And we're going to stop right there because we're getting down to the fuzzies. I don't want fuzzies on my fly. It muddles it up. Uh, someone asked me, what about if you did like a after feather or fire flume on the front? You know, something like what Sparrowfly Gar Jack Garside did. And not really interested in doing that. I just want to keep it basic, simple, and they are effective. So that works for me. Go ahead and spin that around a little bit. 
and you can see it's got a little bit of chocolate flavor in there with that oh those fish love this thing let me tell you so now i'm going to do is before i trim that off i'm going to take the tail fibers and probably about hook gap come back and trim them off did i trim i didn't trim them both off did i oh, oh they're there somewhere all right there they are there's one's stuck on one's turn but that's mother nature for you it's a re, it's a problem child stonefly <laughs> that's what we'll call it yeah all right good half hitch in here right away so i don't lose that come up and use my whip finish wrap that around a few times like that come on up makes it nice that way so you know, run your scissors up, give your fly a haircut, and then they're going, oh, no. So, all right. So that is basically the, oh, I forgot one step to it, too, I think. The collar on there we forgot to put on, which I will do another one right now. How's that sound, everybody? I forgot to put a collar on that one, of peacock. So we'll just hurry up and fix that one. What happened was that's what dropped on my floor with my peacock dubbing. I said I was going to get that, and I didn't. All right, I'm going to do this one back over again. Get that secured in there. Go ahead and get your thread started. Come back. I got a lot of lace here so it doesn't go anywhere. Get some tail material. Give you the full effect of this here. See, you get talking, you forget to put stuff on a fly. The other one would still work. It just, I need that little hot spot that's in there. See, now these legs turned out really good. They splayed out just how I want them, as you can see there. See, that's what I wanted in the other one. But that's fine. The other one, it works just as good either way. Okay, I want to start. I got the right end. The black on here. And if you anybody is curious about the Norvice or interested in it, just shoot me questions or over at Bob and Slingers or on my Facebook page or whatever, and I'll help you out on it. Um, I really love the legacy. I actually would like to get a purple vice, so you know, but. What's cool is, you know, you started out tying vi on vices that are all solid chrome and everything else. And, you know, sh nice shiny vices. Now they're getting all these fancy colors in there, which is really cool. You know, I'm not down in it. So, all right, go ahead and wrap this forward. But you can see the hook sort of moves when I'm doing. That means I got enough pressure on there. Um, it's not breaking the thread, but it's also moving the hook. So it's nice tight body going up. Um if you really want to, and which I'm not going to do it here, I'll, one of these times in videos I'll do the techniques here on using the Norvice. Um, but if I'm doing production on these, a whole bunch of them, I am using the Norvice features of spinning the vice and getting that stuff whizzing right on down in there. For purposes for tonight, I'm just going to do this this way. All right, wrap that on there just like that. Wrap, go a couple wraps over this way behind it, and go ahead and trim that off. Now... I knew I dropped something. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> it always happens, you know. All right, this is Ice Dub Peacock. Um, this is what the other one forgot to put on there. Uh, this is like a little hot spot on here. I think this is, we did it in two different Ice Dubs. We did it in a tan Ice Dub, and we did it in this Peacock Ice Dub. Um, this Peacock Ice Dub makes it to be sort of like a, um, I don't even know, like a hot spot on there works great. So I highly recommend using that on there if you're going to tie tie with this. Uh, I know you've been fishing with it with steelhead. It works great. And my tester's just been having a field day with these. So, All right, so I'll go ahead and trim that off. Spin this around. You can see you get that little bit of a hot spot in there. Works great. Ice Dub is the 
master of all dubbings. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Oh, no more chocolate. I've got the olive. I'm going to put an olive on there. All right. Too big again. All right. Pull the feathers off one side. Come on down. Trim all the way down. So again, you end up with a feather like that. Go ahead and wrap around there. Now this one looks a little better here. It's got that thorax in there. Beefs it up a little bit, just enough to make those fish think for a minute. Hey, I might take him. So, all right, go ahead and wrap around there just like that. And just keep wrapping around and let me see where I want to stop at. About right, oh, I'm backing up one more right there. What happens is I'm getting down to the soft feathers on the bottom. I don't want that in the front of the fly to muddle it up. So, Work your thread through. I do go up front and behind. It locks it in that way. And then pull up on it. Use tips. Your scissors. Okay, get that out of there. Comb your feathers back. Spin them around. Get this one bad boy that does not want to lay down. All right. And we have... A little black, my little black stony. Um, not really the best focus, but hopefully it's better on the when you're watching it than on my computer because it doesn't look that focused on. So go ahead and do a couple half hitches, and then I'm gonna come up with my whip finisher. And if you're not really good with the whip finisher, practice with it. Just put a hook in and practice putting knots on a thread. And worst you can do is. Cut the threads off on there and, uh, you know, just restart over and do it again. So you're not, I did it again. So that's what I mean. These razor scissors, <laughs> you get got to get used to trimming stuff with them because they, there we go. So that is a little black stone fly or stony and trim those off. So basically that is the train and merge a little back stony spin them around you can twist the feathers on your soft tackle how you want them so basically like i said i fish these and as an emerger then when um it gets a certain time of the day fish will start rising instead of switching over to dry fly if you just want to keep it on there it's got the floating yarn on it poly yarn so just put some of your dry fly floating on it Put in the water and try it. Um, it actually does work great. There's a section that we fish on opening day, and there's a whole bunch of cedars and hemlocks along there, and usually the hatch is coming off there, especially if it's raining. We usually see a really big hatch. And just put dry fly floating on it, and it works great. We did that last year a couple times, and we had a really good time. So hopefully everybody enjoys this. And like I said, it's my trilogy of my trout flies. Um, the sea train and merger series there's gonna be one more something about the name of white glove howdy uh, could be the name of it i don't know so um please stay with us and hopefully tying here live will um you guys enjoy it and stuff and we'll get try to get more people involved in that and we'll go from there um thank you tonight and we'll see what we're going to do next week maybe we'll go back to the arena of smallmouth fishing all right, everybody have a nice evening. Thank you, and tight lines.